It's Friday the 5th of April and we're going to take a look at Bitcoin and some crypto. Uh, today is non-farm payrolls, which sometimes can lead to a little bit of volatility, even if the uh, expected kind of employment news comes in in line. Sometimes, um, yeah, it can cause a little bit of a volatility ahead of the US Open. So the news is announced at an hour before the US Open and sometimes you'll see a nasty spike that gets pretty much reversed when the US market opens. The big event though really for Bitcoin, well the big event, big event is the halving which is now 15 days away and due on the 19th of April. But um, in between then on Monday we've got a solar eclipse. Now before you go, oh I'm not listening to this, it's a little bit out there. The Terra Luna depegging collapse happened on an eclipse and um, the FTX collapse, the famous November collapse of FTX and the bankruptcy happened on an eclipse. And we had a lunar eclipse last month on the 25th of March, which marked the sentencing, which is basically kind of an ending, really, of Sam Bankman free. Now, I'm not saying, so, that, so we can see that you know, what was quite interesting about if we take a look at where we were in Bitcoin, you know, when we had this um, eclipse with the FTX collapse, that really marked the low. So, you know, the Terra Luna thing was a high, the FTX collapse was a low and Bitcoin kind of didn't much look back after that. It kind of was a bottoming. So I wouldn't assume that this is necessarily going to be... Um, a big major high or low and it may not be not, it may not be an event this time but it's just something to watch out for that's on monday the 8th really though the big event in bitcoin is coming up is the halving and let's take a look at where we are in this halving chart so i'm just going to take this off tidy up this chart each one of these hor orange horizontal lines have been previous bitcoin halvings and if we go all the way back to the first one, which was way back in 2012, we can see that following the halving, we had a little bit of a chop zone, but that chop zone then became a low and we kind of took off from that. So we went from, you know, 12 bucks uh, in this first halving to, you know, all the way to 260. In the next halving, which let's find it, Next orange line, here we are. Here was our next halving, which came, of course, in 2016. And this was the halving here. You can see that a month before the halving, we went into some sideways chop. And then actually what we made was a textbook three-wave correction, equal measured move, and rallied from there. So these halving events tend to kind of mark a consolidation correction, not a pull back, not a major high, not a bearish reversal, and we erupt from there. That's exactly obviously what we did in 2016. You know, we were down here at $600 or whatever, $500, and of course we went parabolic. What was quite interesting about this one is that we made this kind of correction zone and we came back and tested it very nicely which gave us a really nice buy opportunity back in 2016 so here we go into our next halving which came in 2020 and again we did a very nice three wave correction it was a bit of a choppy zone wasn't it uh, but we stayed in this choppy zone the halving actually the the choppiness mostly came after although we started kind of two weeks before one week before um, also the very nice sideways correction we made here this this actually we could argue at this halving in 2020 that we actually made a much bigger three wave correction um, that started you know six months before um, obviously that's not the case now but also what I like here this very nice sideways zone that we can made in this halving if you missed the breakout it came back and retested it very nicely to give us another long entry before again going parabolic so here we are coming into the next halving we have kind of gone in we got very overstretched didn't we on the upside and so in this time and you know markets learn pretty fast as well what happens at, you know correlation events 
and I wouldn't be surprised if rather than um, the halving kind of being the uh, uh, start of a choppy correction, it could also mark the ending of it, especially, you know, with the collapse and so much going on. I'm not saying it, I'm saying it could, please don't take it as a, you know, take to the bank by this on this day, uh, because that may not necessarily be so. But a very nice three wave correction would be a very nice buying opportunity here in Bitcoin. And we are two weeks away. So that's one to watch out for. So this thing about markets learning and so expecting some chop afterwards, you know, where the first time the central banks introduced quantitative easing after the market crash in 2007, 2008, um, it took the market quite a long time to work out that how much extra liquidity this was and what it meant and it rallied. And then the second time they did it, the market reacted much more quickly. And it got to the point then when the ECB hinted with a maybe they might think about quantitative easing, the market absolutely exploded, anticipating what they knew would come. So it may be that we're not going to see these corrections after halvings anymore. Um, in fact, you know, we could flip it. So that's kind of where we are with Bitcoin. Now, if we take a look at where we are technically levels, you know, we're sideways in the range of the previous highs that we made in 2021 and at the end of 2021. And what we are also doing here. So, you know, I have this thing about a, a 236 fib, right? When we see um, when we had this previous really nice bull run. So we look at say this 2021 bull run that we had this 236 fib was a very nice support to know that we were still going up sometimes it's a bit messy um, but as long as we you know don't fall underneath that usually or even we go back to this bigger one here the lovely run of 2017 Again, I'm going to go from this low that we made. This 236 fib becomes, for me, a really kind of important uh, trend support. Um, and if you if you get underneath it, you know you're going to see a bigger pullback. And if you hold it, you kind of uh, keep going. And when you first come back to it, let's go down to a daily and look back here. Actually, I probably can't do that. Let's do a more recent one. Um, so, for example, let's look at the run that we are in from the low that we made in November 2022. And we'll look at the big correction that we had in January that got everyone scared. You can see, let's go back to the weekly. Look at it here. On the weekly, we didn't close underneath this 236 fib level. And it was a pretty nice trend. And when we had this really nice bull run here uh, back in 2020. Let's take a look at this one. We did the same thing with holding this 236 whip. So from this low to this high here. This is 2020. Our pullback was exactly to this 236 fib. Again, it was a little bit messy from this low, but actually if we go from this whole swing low, you can see this 236 fib becomes um, much more of a kind of bull bear guide. So I always say if you break the 236 fib, you want to look for the market to get underneath it and hold underneath it. And if it does, that is your bigger correction underway. Oh, what the hell? Hold on, I'm just trying to close this. Mercury's retrograde. I'm having fun with these tools, right? So here, messy 236 pullback, but we didn't get underneath it and get stuck underneath it. Same thing here, bounce first time, but when we lost it and got underneath it, we saw a bigger pullback. So here we are again. If we go from the low that we made then in November 2022, where is our kind of 236 uh, fib level? 60,000. That 60,000 is pretty important because if we are to do another lovely equal measured move correction lower here, kind of lines up with that 60,000 as well. So let's measure from this high. Wait, not doing this right at all. Try again. High to low from here. 58,850, 58, so basically 59,000. So if we're going to do this equal measured move thing, this would be kind of the ideal place to buy. That also puts us at this previous swing low, which would 
make a lot of sense. You know, these previous swing lows and highs are pretty important usually. So that's kind of, if you're looking at where around the halving are we likely to come back to, I would say that the 60,000 level becomes pretty important. And I wouldn't be selling underneath this. Now, if we got underneath here and got stuck underneath here, I think we could be maybe looking at a bigger correction, but we have never done that before at a halving, bear that in mind. And if we're not gonna come all the way back, this daily 50 moving average and 63,750 could be as far as we go and we could just hold this daily 50. Now, if we, um, yeah, it's just, it's just one of those levels. In previous bull runs, for example, that 2017 one, we had like five pullbacks that were 20, 25%. So coming back to here really wouldn't be that weird at all. If I go back to the weekly, then 60,000 is kind of the key. On the weekly, if we take our time getting here, then this weekly 20 moving average will come back. I again, I'm I'm not I'm not I'm not advocating shorting this or that the high is in or anything like that. I really at the moment this all looks very nice sideways corrective zone. So far this little high here that we made in uh, April 2021 is holding a support that's basically at 64,800, 64,900, so basically 65,000. Underneath 65,000, we are likely to see a little bit of a bigger pullback. I think if we saw a lower time frame uh, double bottom and reversal here, maybe it, you could put your toe in the water with a little, but I really do think that this 60,000 is a better buy and that potentially is where we're heading back to. If not today on non-farm payroll, then uh, potentially next week we could see some volatility that kind of gets us there. So watch out for that. Now, we have uh, just had the non-farm uh, non payrolls. Jobs numbers come in. They came in much, much better than expected. The unemployment rate has fallen. The market was expected to add like 200,000 more jobs and they've added 300,000 more jobs. Average hourly earnings came in at 0.3% as expected. So it's looking pretty good. The um, Canadian uh, employment numbers were a bit of a miss, but, you know, Bitcoin, we basically look at the price in dollar. So the dollar perspectives become important. Now, there are some people looking at this as a head and shoulders pattern. I want to say like this with a sloping neckline. Now for me, I don't mind a sloping neckline that points this way, first of all, but I'm not so fond of uh, head and shoulders patterns where they're not very uh, balanced. So this is a small left shoulder and a big, big right shoulder. So for me, this is more likely a bigger and head and shoulders patterns that fail, they don't, and by fail, I mean, they don't reach the projected target, which is twice. So when you see a head and shoulders, your target is twice the head to the neckline. So that would be from projected from where you break down the neckline. So that would be um, here, so back to this swing low basically and back to 50,000. Now head and shoulders patterns that break down and don't meet their target are usually because they're ABC. So if this is our ABC, this is our second leg 60,000 and this previous swing low, horizontal levels matter, this is where we are likely to come back to. So that 60,000 zone, if you're, if you know, like so many of us, you go, oh, we never have enough Bitcoin, then that is going to be the key support level. And um, I'm really only going to think that we see a bigger pullback if we get underneath it and it becomes resistance. And then again, next would be 50,000. I have to say, though, back to the daily 200 moving average and a little bit bigger. And that would mean that this, you know, it, it, it was just a correction. I can't stress that enough. So short term, I'm expecting some volatility, if not today, then potentially on Monday. And I do think underneath 65,000, we are likely to see a bigger pullback to 60,000. And that is where I'm going to be looking to buy. Let's take a look at ETH and see if ETH is bearing this out. Now, this is a daily chart of ETH. And again, I was expecting to be this to be a 
free wave correction and another leg lower because to me in ETH it was really clear that this wasn't a nice three wave correction which you kind of normally want to see you know one two three in previous corrections one two three and you can go up again so if we measure from this high to this low in ETH then and project it from this high the 61.8 of the first leg which is where this would be shorter but a measured move comes in at 3000 and if we break underneath three excuse me if we break underneath 3000 this previous swing low then the equal measured move is down here at 2651 that's this previous swing high i think by the time we get here if we take our time that would also be a pretty nice pullback to this daily 200 moving average which as you can see is moving higher so if you're looking for you know buy of a century great opportunity the first level i would be looking for in eth and you can see this 200 moving average in previous three wave corrections has been really important support for eth that's where i would be looking for 2650 you know it's not a hard line you kind of when I mark these levels, when I look for it to come back here, I look for a lower time frame, like an hourly or something, um, double bottom or bottoming pattern. And crypto is very good at these double bottoms. It particularly likes those swing failure patterns. So what's a swing failure pattern? It's when you make a high and then you can't sustain a new high. So for example, here, uh, we were going higher, we made a high, couldn't sustain this new high that was a start of a bigger top even short term you see this a lot and so here on the low we knew that this was going to be a bigger bounce because we made a low couldn't hold this new low so it's one of those funky double bottoms we don't happen all the time but they do happen a lot in crypto so uh 3100 underneath 3100 2650 are the levels that i'm looking for in eth again it might not happen today it might be monday just watch out just those eclipses can be pretty funky one thing i will say about what happened yesterday i was watching bitcoin pretty closely and bitcoin followed stocks higher yesterday with a kind of like i don't know four hour delay so and previously you know we've seen bitcoin lead the way so i think if we're watching what Bitcoin's going to do today it might be a good idea to keep a lie on some of those US stock indexes like the S&P because it followed it pretty closely with a lag yesterday. OK, let's take a look at some more uh, chart requests and what's going on, because pretty much it's everything is in a correction. Just let's take a look, though, at some uh, more important ones. Let's take a look at doge for example now doge is at a really big if we take a look at this on the weekly this is a really big level as we just showed you as i just showed you in bitcoin remember that 236 fib in terms of fibonacci is a really key trend support and resistance so from the high in 2021 to the low that we made in 2022 in doge this was the 236 fib and this is where we're seeing a little bit of a bearish reversal this week in Bic in Doge. Now, if we're going to rely on that 236 thing, then we're going to do it the other way. So from this swing low here, you can see that we are already underneath this 236 and pointing at a bigger correction. Even if I go from this low, way back in June 2022, we're underneath that 236 Fib level. So unless we can recover it with a really big bounce before the end of today, um, I think that we are going to see a bigger correction in doge now the most common correction for me is three waves back to a 50 percent back to a previous swing low for doge that would mean back to 0.14 say for example this is a wave one two three that would be quite a common place um it's a wave i don't i know that they're going to be a bit overlapping but it's the start of low here so uh and don't expect in doge that it, we go down there in one so i wouldn't be surprised for example See this 236 fib, this is what I mean about watching if we get in a, any market, if we get underneath it. So this 236 fib here at 0.187, we would have said should have been, if we're going to keep trending higher, important support. But if we get underneath it and becomes resistance, we're going to keep going. And if we go down to the 4 hour, you can see here in Doge, that's exactly what happened. 
So what's pretty good about that is if we have a strong recovery today and we get a back above this level, this would be pretty good buy signal, wouldn't it? Back above 0.187. Otherwise, I'm afraid Doge. And I wouldn't be surprised at all if we bounced here. Uh, it's just one of those levels. But only back above 0.17 would, would we say that this is more likely that we are resuming the uptrend in Doge. Otherwise, I think we could see a bigger correction. So let's take a look at some of the gaming coins and some requests. First of all, we're going to look at Dual. And here, this is one that's been in a really nice trendy market. I'm going to look at regular candles though, because again, we're going to do this. I'm going to do Fibri traces from this high to low and see if they're important. Sometimes, you know, it can be a bit dodgy relying on these levels. Um, because, you know, the exchanges don't always look the same and so on. I quite often prefer to look from, because this initial candle can be so wobbly, I prefer to look from the high to this one that's clearly a low. And if we do that here, we can see this 236 Fib initially was clearly resistance, had a correction, got back above it, really nice run. And when we came back and retested it, it was clearly support. So are we looking at a big... A, B, C here. Was this an equal measured move? Correction. It could be, couldn't it? It was dead on. Look. Now that's important because if you reverse at an equal measured move, which we have in dual, and you then close back underneath this 61.8 level, you are usually, that can kind of confirms it as an ABC and you usually see a much bigger correction in dual. So if you're a big time, you know, hodler holder looking for a big swing, uh, holding above and not getting stuck underneath 0 0.024 would be quite important. Now we could also say, you know, if you're a candlestick trader, you would say 50% of this candle, which is exactly kind of where we are here on the daily, should be pretty nice trend support if we're going to keep high, going higher. What do I mean there by that? Well, when you have a big thrust candle, look, big thrust candle off the low, 50% back of the open close very often is, in terms of candlesticks, pretty important trend support. Big thrust candle, halfway back, kept going. It's only when you kind of uh, do more than that, you you know you're looking at a bit more of a bigger correction. So halfway back of this big weekly thrust, daily sorry, thrust scandal should be kind of pretty important support if we're going to keep going higher. And if we continue lower, 0 0.024 is going to be the key support underneath that. I hate to say it, but the most common retrace of an ABC correction like this is a 786 fit. So down here 0 0.0103 so those are the levels to watch out for in dual good support here maybe good support maybe a little bit lower at 0 0.026 underneath 0 0.024 we are likely to see a much bigger correction in uh, dual let's take a look at some more we're going to look at a uh, game if i can find everything sometimes stuff hides and it's not where I'm looking for it which is never okay let's try again if not it doesn't matter we all bring it up okay so game Okay, I'm going to start with a weekly chart in this one because this one has quite a nice lot of history. And I have seen some people on Twitter pretty bullish of this one. But if I go from the high that we made in 2021 to the low that we made in 2022, you can see that we have not our first, haven't got anywhere near this 236 fib. So that kind of would be our first target if we continue higher at 0.83. Now, when you're miles away from these levels, they don't become kind of quite so important. So what I then try to look at is the most recent swing and where we are relative to that. So 
where was the last kind of big correction? And this one was just kind of, uh, sadly, dropped in a little bit of a straight line, didn't it? Now, if we take the most kind of recent swing lower, I suppose we could argue it's here. It's a little bit unclear. What I will say, so when, I, when we're doing this, I'm going to say, right, we need to look at the 236 fib going the other way for support and see when this has stopped going up. And you can see that we have gone beyond that, the 50% was support. What was quite interesting previously, for example, this high, 50% was support and we kept going higher. And so this, you know, that's what we did last time. So this is pretty interesting support and we're going to be looking at a much bigger correction this 50% level goes and next fib lower next fib lower and swing low would mean this 61.8 level here at 0.175 also if we go down a time frame we're going to be looking at a bigger maybe three wave correction so one two three this is also you can see these fib levels are really working I think of them like a staircase, so this 38.2 then, we can say if we get back above this, okay, mean reverting markets tend to keep mean reverting, so we would look for at least 50% of this drop, next leg up, if we can get above this 0.268 level, but underneath the bottom of this range at 0.22, we are, again, likely to continue lower, so to the 68 level, 61.8 level and potentially the swing low and a bigger 786 move. So game starter sitting on key support at 0.22. If it breaks, potentially we could come all the way back to 0 0.1, 0 0.108. Floki is quite an interesting chart as well. Let's take a look at Floki and talk about why. Well, first off when i look at this i have to say gosh this looks pretty nice it looks like we made a nice three wave correction and this extended swing was so much bigger than this first one then potentially you know we're just doing a wave four and we're going to keep going higher here so this would be wave one two three wave four pull back and keep going higher the problem is this was so extended let's see where we are now we've done that 50% thing that I just talked about in game. So when you hold the 50%, your first target is going to be 50% the other way. Look, because we bounced from this 50%. We went up 50% here. Here's our first target. We squeaked a little bit higher. This, again, in the middle, looks very choppy and corrective. And so I think potentially we're starting another leg lower. So I'm going to measure from this high to this low. Our first target is going to be a retest of this low then around 17.08, this swing high, support and resistance. If it breaks, we're likely to do this, at least this measured move and back to this big swing low here. And I have to say that with these patterns, that potentially is a bit more likely. So again, 0.17 and this daily 50 moving average on Floki is going to be key support. It's at 1700 and if we don't, hold it we are going to drop to 1100 and that's another kind of 30 40 percent we don't want to be uh, uh, doing that a great opportunity obviously but Floki then has um, it would still be just you know because it went in such an extended move this would still kind of be a buying opportunity because it would just be three waves back back to the previous swing low still holding above the daily 200 moving average not like nothing to dislike about this but it's very volatile and you can get run over in these kind of um, moves so be careful of that okay next one we are going to look at is axs and this is another one sitting on key support now if i go back to the weekly or the monthly in axs this is another gaming coin that's had a really nasty drop like if we were looking at where's the 236 fib from the high in 2021 in this one we're nowhere near i'm again putting my fib retrace levels on the most recent high to low and if we do this you can see we reversed at this 886 fib level when you reverse an 886 fib level your first target is usually the 50 percent that's where we have bounced from we've gone 50 percent higher 
are we looking at another leg lower and a bigger ABC? We could be if this level breaks. Is this a head and shoulders pattern? No, because this left shoulder is far too small in relation to this right shoulder. They need to have some kind of balance and we have not got that here. So we're going to say that this 50% level at round uh, at uh, 8.97, basically 9, is key support. If we get stuck underneath it, we're likely to do first off will be this measured move lower. So high to low. There's our 61.8 at this key support. So underneath 9, we're going to continue lower to 7.23, which would be a really nice level because the daily 200 moving averages here and that would be the next support level to put your toe in the water to potentially if we get a bullish reversal uh, have a go at the next swing higher so that's where we are in axs let's take a look at the next request which is sand i've been they're very volatile but i do think these potentially gaming coins have some opportunities now this is another one where if you put your fib retrace level all the way up from this high we're nowhere near this first target on the upside um, if we reverse the downtrend the first target would be here at 1.35 at the moment and we have made a lower high we have not we have not kind of reversed this downtrend there is a lot to like though mainly because of this bullish reversal of our weekly moving averages which potentially points to more upside. What we don't, again, want to see is one of those three wave equal measured move corrections, which is exactly what we made. And because we are underneath the 61.8, if we hold, stay underneath 0.666, I'm afraid we are likely to do a bigger correction here, potentially back to the swing low, potentially the 61.8. So my fib measurements are now going to be not from the high, but from this low and we're going level to level to level so here's our first swing going to measure it so all of these gaming coins are unfortunately pointing to a little bit more downside before this resolves so here this 50 percent level and the 61 so and the daily sorry weekly 20 moving average at 0 0.56 0 0.55 is key support underneath it we are heading lower to 0.45 and the weekly 50 moving average and potentially lower than that to 0.4. So key, key support and resistance at 0.55 for sand. And having made that bigger ABC correction, it is possible that we come, and I think quite likely, that we continue down to uh, 0 0.39, 0 0.4. Now, until you actually make a new low here, it is always possible, you know, that you've had a drop. We're going to see a bigger ABC correction before we do that next leg. So for me, how do I know that's happening? If I'm looking at this, right, I use Heiken Ashi candles, particularly on the daily and the weekly. They're really effective when they change color. So if we were to go green here, and recover this daily 50 moving average I would say we're going to be doing that bigger ABC and as long as we stay underneath it and we don't get that green Heikinashi on the daily we are still headed lower to test these lows down here at 0.55 that's for me the key way that I pull backs to moving average going right from red to green that's such an easy simple simple way to see whether you're going higher or lower basically and holding the trend okay next coin we're going to look at is uh, ape i have to say a lot of these gaming coins have made the same pattern now if we zoom out here on the weekly you can see we've been in a pretty strong downtrend and when i look at this move that we've made off the lows from october again It is looking, this was pretty, it was a measured move, so we reversed it exactly at the 1.618 of this first swing. Now, normally I would expect that to be a three wave back and a fourth, a fifth wave. So this would be one, two, three, four, five, nice trendy move. But we haven't, we've fallen back underneath these weekly moving averages. We have fallen back underneath 
this 61.8 a level which for me is kind of key you need to hold so i have to say in this one unless we can get above 1.78 we are still headed lower if i measure fibs from this low to high so that's my key level sorry let's take that off now this is also a 618 fib so we could bounce from here and i would say only back above these daily moving averages only a really above that kind of 1.76 1.8 zone uh, when it's a not clear level i make it a zone that's really if we bounce here the level that we've got to get above and hold above if this is done with the correction and gonna go higher so holding underneath these unfortunately potentially means for me the really good level would be a 786 retrace of this whole thing with an equal measured move or something like that then if it all lined up at the same level doesn't quite I think we could see a bigger uh, pullback in this one in ape as well so the next one we're going to look at is prime start look at this massive move we've had from the low unfortunately we can count five waves up one two three four five i may not have measured this correctly but that's what it's looking like and because the most common retrace of a five wave move like this is usually three waves back to the previous swing low or wave four that's quite a long way back seven eight six fib what i I would say we were still going up, remember, if we hold above this 236 fib level. And unfortunately, we are not. We are underneath it. And as I said, this 236 fib, first time back to it, look, it was really nice support. We bounced. Now we're underneath it and it's become resistance. So I'm afraid in this one, we are going to continue lower in prime and level to level to level. So 17.96 is the next support and daily 50 moving average underneath this we could come all the way back to this swing low here around 6.8 uh, underneath you know these daily moving averages are really nice trend support when you lose them you tend to see a bigger pullback so 17.96 next potential support level prime still has further to fall let's take a look at fetch fat ai now this is one Let's put regular candles on and take a look at the big picture here. This is another one that's had a really nice run and we could, we are at least in a correction. Now this, any way about it, has got pretty overbought here. And by overbought, I mean how far are we away from these moving averages, which have previously been support and then resistance. We are a long way. Fact, we have to come all the way back to 1.5 and we're at 2.5 at the moment so we would have to come back to 1.5 just to say hi to the weekly 20 moving average so is this just going to be a pullback and a really strong uptrend if we are remember we would hold this swing low the daily 50 moving average and if not i'm afraid we continue low so 2.16 also where is our 236 fib all the way from this big swing low I'm going to take this most recent swing first and then say, OK, that would be the nice trend support. But getting underneath the big one from the low, the low, low here, even if we took it from the lowest lower, you know, that's uh, going to be a little bit of an issue. Now, this previous swing low and the 38.2 fib are at the same level. So that kind of adds weight to that 2.17 level being support. And if we take a look at this 236 fib here, big picture on the daily, we are underneath it. It's resistance. So is the daily 20 moving average, which is previous support. So we can say short term, if these lows break, we are going to continue lower. And 2.17 is the next support in fetch. Now, remember, quite often, if you see a three wave move, you'll see, sorry, if you see a five wave move, You'll see three waves the other direction so if we think this is five waves we could from here unless we break these low we could do a big three wave correction here like this 
before we continue that. So at this point, underneath, is this a good place to sell? No, no. It unfortunately is not. Um, we could very easily bounce previous highs. But if we double topped or did a sideways range or a bear flag or any kind of bearish pattern here, I have to say I still think this continues lower. Or if we tried again to get back above this 236 fib level, this is a four hour chart and it became a resistance and a lower high, then that would be a better uh, sell for fetch. So that's where I'm seeing crypto. Bitcoin and ETH at the moment in gaming coins and meme coins, pretty much everything. We are entering, yeah, perhaps another week or two of correction before we can look at a bottom. And I think the end of this month and the halving out of the way, I'm going to be pretty excited about looking for bottoms and not too despondent. 